Hi and welcome to the next stage of the Fire Raptor gunship project and this is the build. So we know that this kit has both plastic and resin items in. So really this section is going to be about how to deal with the resin. The tools I'm going to need for this, we need some clippers and perhaps even a, a craft scalpel just for trimming stuff. These are really good, my trusty ones. I've got a razor saw for cutting through the bigger resin blocks and glue wise i'm going to use super glue and i've got this a stuff grill glue um, and that'll make sure because it's quite heavy that will be sticking stuff i bought a set of two of these cheap um grips and that'll be able to hold while things are gluing um a file just any old fingernail file for trimming down the details a mask because uh, whenever you're dealing with resin especially when you're using the saw you need to avoid breathing in the dust so the mask is always something that everyone seems to have now because of COVID. And then finally, a hoover. Before I get to do any gluing or building, the first thing is to prepare all these resin bits. Now, normally resin comes and it's got some release agents still on the material. So what you need to do is you need to wash them. A bit of soapy water and a toothbrush just to give them a bit of a scrub. So the first thing we're going to do is turn this lot into clipped, ready to be washed resin if you get any supports that are still attached like this one here then i can just clip that off that's nice and easy needs a little bit of a trim i can use the side of the blade like this i can also use my craft knife and for this detail here i can also file it a bit I'm trying to avoid any filing at this stage because the filing is going to create some dust, so I'll need the mask. Also, if you get any bits like this, little bits of film, they're quite easy to get off. See, this cut off really easy like that. First impressions just of these two bits. I'm surprised at how much neatening and tidying they do need. So let's see how it goes as I carry on. Phew. So all the resin bits have been trimmed, tidied, all the bases have gone. This is the leftover bits of the, of the stands and stuff. And that's probably the most expensive bag of plastic ever because this is Forge World leftovers. Uh, so that's just going to go in the bin. Um, I've hoovered, cleaned. Dust is gone, so it's perfect. There will be some bits that I need to check when I'm when I'm um, building it, like the straightness of some of these guns in here. Make sure they're straight, and if they're not, then there's quite a simple process to warm them, straighten them back out. And there's a few bits where you can tell by the fact that I had to shave it down around this this uh, guy here. The fit might not be perfect. So I might have to come back with some green stuff once it's built as well, just to tidy it up before painting. That's also fine. So next stage is to wash all of it. So to do the washing, there's various ways. I get yourself a toothbrush or something with a fine, a fine uh, head on it. Um, so you can get into all the nooks and crannies and wash it. And you want to use warm soapy water, not too warm, and give it a brush all over to make sure it's clean. Now these are actually really good quality. They don't feel slimy. They don't seem too greasy. There's probably not a lot of agent on there, but if you get them wet, you do feel something, so it does definitely need it. So that was a labor of love, washing all these. A couple of them needed two washes, just because they felt a, bit, a little bit greasy still, which made me think there was still some release agent on. But actually, the quality of all these pieces has been quite good. Those first two, like I said, few more problems on these maybe because of the size the majority of them didn't need much tinkering so what i'm going to do now is just try and fit a few bits together so i'll take the instructions which like i said are really poor um, and try and put this together so that's that first bit together the fit is going to be a bit wonky so i hold this front bit together that back bit there it's a bit bent, but I can do. Uh, what I'll be able to do is use my 
trusty clamps. So these first two bits of the chassis were slightly out of shape, so I've had to come up with some interesting clamping ability. So clamping at the bottom, clamping at the top. I've had to use this metal rod here um, to provide clamp pressure all the way down. Um, I've used a little bit of grill glue. The way you use this is you put some on one side and you dampen the other side, and then when they press, the, the moisture activates it. And it can take one to two hours to go off. Uh, and it can expand. So if you put too much, it can actually deform the shape of everything. So, you know, we'll see how this goes. We'll come back in an hour or two, see how this looks like. Some of the other bits I can just glue with super glue. They're not low bearing, they're not difficult. This one is an important one because it's the main chassis. Uh, I can already see there, there's a bit of a gap. Um, things like that I can sort out with green stuff just to tidy up. Point in the build where there's some pieces that are got a slight bend to them and it's not a piece that's going to be glued to anything else, so I can't pull it back into shape. I think even this one has got like a, a little slight dint. You can see that it's, it rocks. So what I need to do is warm these and put them back into shape. Now you can use really warm water to do it, but I don't really want to heat the whole thing up. So what I'm gonna do instead is just use a hairdryer to target this area here, and it'd make it a bit softer and then I'll be able to bend it back into place and then hold it while it dries. And the model's finished being built now. To be honest, I'm a little bit worried about this stand because it's so heavy. It does seem to take the weight, but I like the fact it's got legs and it can stand up like that. That's pretty cool. For this, I've just used plastic glue. That was actually better than Gorilla because it, um, it forms a better bond with the plastic. And um, I think it's a, a brilliant, lovely model. Um, what's a great feature that I like is the fact that these side pods move up and down. Um, so it creates a bit of a bit of a fun poseable nature to it. I've not put the there's actually a shield that goes over the top, so you can't actually see the marine inside. I'm not going to cover that because I think it looks really good. I'm going to paint that up. Um, and the marine at the front there is going to be some glass, but I'll put that on last because I obviously want to paint inside there as well. I've not done any sub assembly build just because I wanted to be able to do it in one go and i'm happy with that so my summary about how this build went the problem i think for this and i'm uh, so i'm starting with the problem is that because you've got plastic bits married with um, resin bits the plastic bit is so accurate and so perfectly sized that any deviations in the resin are really shown up and you get that as well apart from the deviations in the resin but also when you're clipping it and you're trimming it if you over trim it's easy to over trim and mess up and so the the join lines are always the problem. So I think because of the warping, because of the way the lines are done, and because of the difference in accuracy, you will get gaps like that there. And then on the top, I think there's a slightly bigger gap down this side than there. And then particularly on the front here, you can see a thin gap around the edge. And I've used Gorilla Glue here, to, which expands a bit into the gaps so i've done that deliberately and what i'll do is i'll trim and shave that down and neaten up so anywhere where the gorilla glue is showing which is probably underneath here you can see like a gap there then i'm just going to trim that with my craft knife and then what i'll do is i'm going to go with some green stuff mix some green stuff up and just fill in and smooth off all these gaps and because uh, uh, you know this here is kind of is kind of caused by the very first two pieces that are glued together, which is the bottom and the side. And it, it causes a gap later on when you try and attach the plastic because it's so perfectly sized, you've got no flexibility in adjusting it at that point. But it's fine because once I've filled in the side here with a bit of green stuff and I primed it, it's gonna look amazing. Hope you like this video. Please drop me a like. It helps the channel. Thanks very much. Bye.